Dear fellow forgiven in Jesus Christ our Lord, grace and peace to you from God our Father through our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ and all of God's people say together, Amen. A true life story. During the Revolutionary War between the colonies of the America and the British Empire, there was a pastor by the name of John Miller. Pastor Miller heard that his greatest enemy, the one who hated him more than anyone, was going to be hung at the gallows. And so he dropped everything, traveled over 60 miles to find the person that could pardon his worst enemy, General George Washington. And he went up to Washington and said, General, I have come here to ask for a pardon for this man. And Washington said, I am so sorry, I cannot pardon your friend. Pastor Miller said, no, you misunderstand. He is not my friend. He is my worst enemy who would kill me given a chance. To which Washington replied, that changes everything. Here's the pardon. And then Pastor Miller took the pardon another 15 miles by foot to the camp where this man was being held until he could be hung. And as he was being walked to the gallows, Pastor Miller showed up and handed him the pardon. Why? Why would Pastor Miller want to pardon someone who hated him? That's the whole point of our lesson today that we're going to see in our gospel. Brothers and sisters, we're going to ask ourselves a very hard question today. Who is in your sin prison? Sin in prisons. Forgiveness frees. Let's look at our gospel lesson today to see what Christ teaches us. Jesus has been with his disciples for a long time. They've been asking all sorts of questions. Now Jesus is trying to focus them on who he is and why he came. So Peter does what Peter always does, has some crazy questions. Peter came up to Jesus and said, Lord, how often will my brother sin against me and I forgive him? As many as seven times? You see, Peter was going off of the Talmud. The Talmud is the written law by the rabbis. They had all sorts of laws. Instead, in fact, they made like 650 extra laws. You can drag a chair so far on the Sabbath day, if you drag it any further, you're working and sinning against the Lord. All sorts of crazy stuff like that. In the Talmud, they said, you must forgive your brother who sins against you three times. After that, you don't have to. So Peter was being what? Very gracious. He was going to double that. Oh, Jesus, look at how nice I am. I'm going to forgive him seven times. Jesus said to him, I do not say to you seven times, but 70 times seven. In other words, how often? Forever. And to bring this lesson home, Jesus is now going to teach a parable. Remember what's a parable? It's taking two things, setting them side by side, and comparing them in order to teach one lesson, one main lesson. There's going to be one lesson. Here's the comparisons. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven, what's the kingdom of heaven? That's God's activity in our hearts through the word of God about forgiveness in Christ. The activity of God through the word about the forgiveness. That's the one thing. May be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his servants. So how God works through Jesus to 
share forgiveness, to how this king is going to settle accounts owed him by his servants. When he began to settle, one was brought to him who owed him 10,000 talents. What's a talent weigh? It's about 80 pounds. 800,000 pounds of gold. How much would that be worth in our world today? About, about 25 billion dollars. 25 billion dollars! And since he could not pay, his master ordered him to be sold with his wife and children and all that he had, and payment be made. Now, this wasn't going to pay $25 billion. Sell your man this way, sell mom that way, sell children that way, sell all of your stuff. Maybe, maybe a couple hundred dollars, maybe a thousand dollars. That's not going to make up for $25 billion, is it? But at least the king gets something, right? At least he gets something. So the servant fell on his knees, imploring him, have patience with me, and I will pay you everything. Could he? What's a servant make? Minimum wage, maybe? How long would it take a servant to pay back $25 billion? I figured it up. One million lifetimes. One million lifetimes. So could he pay it back? Like he said, give me time and I'll pay it back? No. This servant was helpless to pay back what he owed the king. Completely helpless. And out of pity for him, the master of that servant released him and forgave him the debt. $25 billion wiped clean. What does the word pity mean? It says he had pity. What does the word pity mean? It means that you see something completely helpless, not able to help itself at all, completely lost, helpless. And you reach out and you give them what they need. The sign language for forgiveness is this. Put your hand out like this. Your sin has been what? Wiped away clean. This servant's $25 billion debt? God. But when that same servant went out, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him 100 denarii. What's a denarii? One day's wage. So this is about three months' wages. Let's say ten, twelve thousand dollars $12,000. He finds one of his brothers who owes him $10,000. Seizing him, he began to choke him, saying, Pay what you owe. So his fellow servant fell down and pleaded with him, Have patience with me, and I will pay you. Could he? Yeah. Over time, saving back some money, paying him back on time, he might have been able to pay him back if he just had a little patience. He refused and went and put him in prison until he should pay the debt. When his fellow servants, when all the other people who worked with this man saw that, what had taken place, they were greatly distressed, and they went and reported to their master all that had taken place. Then his master summoned him and said to him, You wicked servant! I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me. And should you not have had mercy on your fellow servant as I had mercy on you? And in anger his master delivered him to, be to the jailers until he could pay all his debt. How long was he going to be in jail? How many lifetimes? A million lifetimes. Here's the point to the parable. 
so also my heavenly Father will do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother from your heart. Wow, this is one of those hard lessons, isn't it? Our Friday noon Bible class, we always go through all of the lessons. And remember, Betty, what you all said? Glad it's you preaching, not me, Pastor. This is a hard lesson, isn't it? Because, yes, I'm sure all of us has had somebody who maybe have hurt us, hurt our family in terrible ways, maybe even. Really bad ways. And maybe we have put them in the sin prison in our hearts. And maybe we don't want to have anything to do with them. There was a little boy who was sitting on a park bench, groaning and moaning and wriggling in pain as he was sitting there. And an older gentleman walked by and said, well, what's wrong, young man? Why are you wiggling in pain? He said, I'm sitting on a bumblebee. Well, why don't you just stand up and let him go? Asked the old man. The boy responded, because I'm hurting him more than he hurts me. I won't talk to that person. I won't acknowledge that person. I will tell everybody that I can what they did to me. Forgiveness. Have you ever heard of the true life account called the point of the spear? Have you heard that? It's been made a book and a movie. Have you heard about that one? It is the account of a group of missionaries who wanted to go off into the Amazon to try and reach out to this one tribe who nobody else could reach out to. They wanted to reach out with a message of forgiveness, but because of some of the cultural things of this tribe, they just couldn't. Nobody could, it seems like. Because one of the things that this culture had was their anger. It was a explosive anger. To the point that if you did something wrong, I wouldn't just get angry. I would just kill you. So, burnt your toast. I kill you! Step on your toe. I kill you! That'd be kind of hard to share the message of Jesus with, wouldn't it? But this group of missionaries decided they were going to try. So they brought their whole families down and put them in a camp and then would leave them at camp while they would walk off into the jungle to find this tribe. And they eventually found them and in patience, eventually began to share the message of Jesus until the inevitable happened. They did something unknowingly. They didn't mean to. And the tribe killed every one of them. Word got back to the families that all the husbands were dead. Tortured and then murdered. The families all moved back to their homes and one young man of that family, whose father had been tortured and murdered, had it on his heart. I'm going to become a missionary. And I'm going to go back to that tribe and I'm going to find that man who killed my father. And I'm going to share the message of Jesus. Why would you do that? Why would you ever want to do that? They're going to kill you. His response was, if they kill me, where will I go? But if somebody kills that man, not knowing their Savior, he will go where? And I couldn't live with that, knowing that my forgiveness was free. And the story goes on that he did find that man who killed his father, eventually shared the message of Christ, and that whole tribe eventually was brought to faith in Jesus because of what? Sin 
and somebody's loving response to sin. Forgiveness. God's word says, as far as the east is from the west, so far have I removed your transgressions from you. How far is east from west? God has done what with our sins? 1 John, the blood of Jesus purifies us from all sin. Whose blood? Forgive me my trespasses as I forgive those who trespass against me. Lord's Prayer. Brothers and sisters, I'm sure all of us have had people in our sin prison. But what a joy it is to be reminded that we're forgiven. Why? Because of God's love for all through the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus. And that gives me an opportunity to do what? Share forgiveness with everyone, understanding that on my own, I am completely helpless. And yet God helped and loved me anyway. Ephesians 4.32, be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ, God forgave you. May God grant it to each one of us that our main focus is sharing and living and proclaiming the forgiveness of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now may that peace of God, which is above and beyond our ability ever to understand it, keep and guard our hearts and minds focused on the forgiveness that we have in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.